black and gold. The Steelers have signed Vic to a one-year contract to make room for him on the roster. Pittsburgh placed quarterback Bruce Gradkowski on IR. Vic, a four-time Pro Bowler, last played for the Jets in 2014. Here's his new head coach, Mike Tomlin, and Big Ben Roethlisberger. For me, it's about any, any, any way, any person, anything that can help this team. Uh, and if, if that's Michael Vick, then, then so be it. There's not a throw in the field that he can't make from an arm strength standpoint. Um, you know, he's a, a very experienced guy at what he does at this point in his career. And obviously, the mobility is still unique, even uh, at 35. It's undeniable the freakish athlete he is and, and quarterback, especially in Atlanta and the things that he did. So, um, you know, as I know a lot of these guys probably growing up wanted to be. Michael Vick, you know, because he was a splash, exciting football player. And um, other than that, that's all I really, you know, the last couple of years have been so focused on us. Michael Vick's a stealer. It's official. Skip, what do you make of this? Stephen A. Smith, after I had a night to digest this, it occurred to me that there is no way that Mike Tomlin would bring in Michael Vick as a one month fill in, a, a clipboard carrier for Bruce Gradkowski while he heals his surgically repaired finger. I'm sorry, the Steelers now have a new backup quarterback, a new number two quarterback, and his name is Michael Vick. Again, I, I've watched Landry Jones because I support the University of Oklahoma, grew up loving the Sooners, following them. I watched every snap Landry Jones took in college. I've told you before, never sold not the biggest fan the only thing landry jones former fourth round pick by the pittsburgh steelers now there for two years going into his third the only thing he has in common with big ben is just being big he's a big strapping kid who resembles big ben in stature but not in talent so i'm, I'm to the point where i'm guessing just maybe educated guessing here that the Steelers have basically given up on Landry Jones. He was hit and miss the other night. I did not watch it in his second preseason stint. He went 10 out of 19 for 172 yards, which is pretty good. A couple touchdown passes, one big interception. I, I just think that Mike Tomlin, who, by the way, went to the same high school that Michael Vick then went to in Newport News, Virginia, where obviously Michael Vick is an all-time legendary figure and remains to this day and will always be at that high school especially, that Mike Tomlin said, hey, I, I've got to bring him in. He's 35 years of age, and Mike Vick had one big game last year against Mike Tomlin, Pittsburgh Steelers. Helped the Jets win that game. Shocking. Jets defense helped win that game by creating four turnovers, but Mike Vick was okay in that game, threw for 132 yards, 10 out of 18. He did run eight times for 39 more yards, and I think that night Mike Tomlin said, hey, he can still play. So I think there's been a changing of the guard in Pittsburgh. I think that Mike Vick is now one play away, one injury to a guy who's incredibly durable in Big Ben, but one play away from being the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback is Mike Vick. Skip Bayless, um, <clears throat> I applaud the signing. Uh, obviously, Mike Tomlin is incredibly fond of Michael Vick. Uh, they come from the similar backgrounds, the same area, and I know Mike Tomlin well enough to know uh, that if you are worthy, uh, he's going to try to look out for you in every way imaginable. And I definitely don't believe that Michael Vick is somebody that doesn't belong in the NFL. My concern with Michael Vick is that he's punch drunk. But I mean by that is that he's taken so many hits, particularly over the course of a couple of years with the Philadelphia Eagles, that I'm incredibly alarmed at the impact that it had on him. I saw him take a rib shot and grab his head. I saw him drop like a corpse when he got hit by Kerry Rhodes years ago in Arizona. Those kind of things concern me. So as far as I'm concerned, Sir, Michael Vick is a proverbial backup. I mean, literal, actually, a literal backup, and that's where he belongs. But that doesn't mean he doesn't belong in the NFL. It means he belongs to be a backup, which means that week to week he shouldn't uh, have to look forward to uh, enduring punishment, physical punishment, because I don't think that he has the durability to take that. But I'm reading also from Ron Cook's column in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. And I got to tell you, I, I, I love the column. I thought he did an outstanding job writing that column. And here's why. He pointed out all of those things you pointed out and what I'm pointing out right now. But he also elaborated extensively because apparently there are folks in the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who are threatening to sell their season tickets. They want absolutely nothing to do with Michael Vick. They consider him a reprehensible individual. And I, and I agree with Ron Cook. You know, stop it. It's ridiculous. Grow up. 
Michael Vick obviously served time in a federal penitentiary due, due, due to the dogfighting scandal. We recognize that. We recognize that he was wrong. We recognize that his actions were egregious and unlawful. And this man paid his debt to the society. It is that simple. Ever since he got out, he has been a completely different person. Uh, he's one of the most model citizens I believe that you could find when you when you talk about resurrection uh, as it pertains to the modern day human beings in the world of sports. Can you think of a better case study, Skip Bayless, than Michael Vick? Because I can't. The guy has been absolutely phenomenal. As a statesman, he's been somebody that's contributed to PETA, to the Humane Society. He's spoken out about how wrong it has been as it pertains to animal cruelty. Uh, he's been a paragon of virtue as far as I'm concerned in that regard. And he's completely turned his life around. And he's conducted himself as a model citizen. And he is one of the few individuals that has made Roger Goodell look very, very good in terms of Roger Goodell's willingness to give him a second chance by allowing him to come back in the league in the aftermath of his prison sentence. So when I look at it from those perspectives, the fact that people would still react this way towards him, I think is shameful. And I think folks in Pittsburgh who feel the way that they do in terms of not wanting Michael Vick because of his past have no forgiveness in their heart, have no compassion whatsoever, and they should be ashamed of themselves. As it pertains to Michael Vick and the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger is as durable as it comes. He's Big Ben for a reason. He's played every game the last two seasons. He's coming off his best season in the career, 103.3 passer rating, you know, throwing for nearly 5,000 yards, leading the league in that category to touchdowns, uh, the way that he has led with the multitude of weapons that he has at his disposal, and Antonio Brown and Wheaton and Bryant and Shula, uh, with Le'Veon Bell coming back once he serves his three games, uh, you know, for the, for, for, for the weed issue uh, with him and LeGarrette Blunt. I think the Steelers have a chance to go to the Super Bowl, and I think somebody like Michael Vick, with his veteran presence, with the trials and tribulations that he has endured, with the kind of man that he is, is going to be an asset, not a liability to that franchise, and I applaud Mike Tomlin for bringing him on board. Okay, are you saying asset as a quarterback or just a locker room presence? I think that I, I think that as a weapon, Skip. I don't I don't want to say either. Um, I definitely think it's as a, as a locker room presence. I definitely think that he's they're going to find a way to utilize him with his uh, with his evasive and elusive and elusive abilities combined with the strong arm that he has. Is he going to be the quarterback? No, but I could see him coming in there, you know, on trick plays and making things happen in conjunction with Big Ben Roethlisberger. I can see him doing some things along those lines and them really finding a way to utilize him as a weapon. I can see Todd Haley coming up with something in that regard, yeah. and I look forward to it. I'm not so sure about that. My experience with star quarterbacks, top five quarterbacks, they don't want a gadget quarterback to come in and sub for them or, or have to to uh, you know, do, do something else in the offense that wasn't in the offense to start with. Like Ben would tell you, I don't need a trick play. I can pull that play off better than any trick play can. Yeah, but I've seen plays skip when Antonio Brown has thrown a pass or two. I've seen the Steelers, you know, exercise trick plays. I've seen them do it in the past, and Ben Roethlisberger didn't have a problem with it then. So why would he have a problem with it now? Not to mention the locker room presence. Not okay. to mention Michael Vick's ability to sub for him. There's a multitude of ways you can figure out to use uh, Michael okay, Vick but, but without you, compromising Ben Roethlisberger. But you can't substitute Vick for, for Ben to run the trick play. You see what I mean? Ben, I don't think, would sit still for that. That's just me. Well, I, I don't. I don't think that Ben. I don't. I disagree with you. I don't think that he'll have a problem with it. Let's say, for example, if you used it one or two times a game. I don't think he. I don't think he'd have a problem with that. I truly don't. Yeah, I don't know. Well, let me say to your earlier point. In in all my years of covering sports, commenting on sports, I've never witnessed a more impressive turnaround than what we have seen from Michael Vick. Mm -hmm. I buy it. I believe it. I, I'm a dog lover. I certainly have forgiven him. I'm fine with him playing, and I hope people in Pittsburgh could do the same. And by the way, the, the, the opposite side of this, it's almost ironic, Roethlisberger has been a big dog advocate, big supporter of the canine corps who helped the police. So I, I don't know. I, this, I think Pittsburgh will end up being just fine with Michael Vick being there. Yeah, and the, the last statement about that, Skip Bayless, is just as human beings, man, you know, especially when somebody pays their debt to society, yeah. Folks here, fo folks in America got to ask themselves a question, you know, uh, you know, you know, would you like to be forgiven? Is everything you've done in life perfect? 
When somebody, you know, you know, lament when somebody doesn't pay a price. Lament when they've gotten away scot-free. Then come talk to me. But when somebody clearly has paid their debt to society, and then after that, you have years and years of evidence to witness their turnaround and how they've changed their ways. I mean, come on now. Yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. at some point in time, it's about compassion and it's about decency. It really is. Yep, we all make mistakes, and he uh, certainly has been a great example of overcoming adversity and resiliency. And you guys brought up forgiveness. Someone else is asking for forgiveness in the sports world. So now that we've heard from Coach Sarkeesian in a public apology, how should USC handle this situation moving forward? The guys will give their reactions next. And if you want to check out all of our topics on this Wednesday, head over to Instagram. And while you're at it, leave us your hot takes as well. This is First Take.